father sacrifices his own heart in an act of supreme love for his son, leaving as a testimony a touching farewell video, a story based on real facts. The love of parents is so great that they are willing to give their lives to save ours. Today, I bring the last words of a father to his son moments before the transplant, the emotional story based on facts. This father and son, who were inseparable, will break your heart. The bond between little Mario and his father Marcos was incomparable from the moment his wife was pregnant. A deep connection was established between him and his son. However, life reserved an unexpected challenge, forcing Marcos to make a crucial choice for the sake of his son. He knew that without him, he could not continue living. So when the news came that Mario urgently needed a donor to survive, Marco did not hesitate to offer his own heart to save the life of his beloved son. Before going into surgery, he recorded a farewell video overflowing with love and sorrow that touched many hearts and brought tears to the eyes of those who watched it. Little Mario, at just seven years old, was diagnosed with a serious heart failure, deeply shaking the stability of his once vibrant and vital health. A sudden car accident rushed him to the nearest hospital where a heroic medical team fought to save his life. However, at that critical moment, Mario's vital signs dangerously plummeted, and for some agonizing minutes, his existence hung by a thread between two worlds, leaving his parents Renata and Marcos immersed in indescribable anguish, the agony of imminent loss. Almost too much for Renata to bear, fainting in Marcos' arms, who found himself obliged to be the pillar of strength amidst despair. With deep relief, the doctors managed to resuscitate Mario, bringing him back to life with a breath of hope. However, the journey was far from over. While his relieved parents thought the worst was over and released him home a few days later, where he resumed his childhood activities with renewed joy, destiny held new challenges. Mario began to experience sharp chest pains so intense that they robbed him of breath, casting a shadow of uncertainty over his already precarious recovery. In the hospital, doctors managed to stop the pain by applying some medications, saying it was due to the accident he had suffered. Marcos and Renata wanted to believe this was normal because of what they had recently been through, and they thought so because they didn't want to deal with hospitals anymore. Therefore, they decided to go on with their lives as if nothing had happened. One day, upon returning to school, little Mario found himself facing a challenging situation. The physical education teacher ridiculed his reluctance to run, demanding that he keep up with the pace of the other students. Mario's already burdened heart, overwhelmed by the recent tragedy, could not withstand the imposed effort, and suddenly, a piercing agony seized his chest, plunging him into a faint that shocked even the teacher himself. In a panic frenzy, the teacher immediately called the medical center, which sent aid to the boy. Mario's parents, consumed by anguish, arrived at the emergency room in despair, confronted with the sight of their beloved son in agony while doctors performed a series of crucial examinations necessary since the first indication of the boy's confrontation. Marcos and Renata faced a storm of guilt and remorse for having neglected such important signs. The guilt weighed heavily on them, a suffocating shadow of regret, as they would not forgive themselves for underestimating the gravity of the situation. When the doctors finally revealed the cause behind their son's suffering, the couple was stunned by the surprising revelation. It turns out that little Mario had a cardiovascular problem that was in a very serious phase because he was born with a very weak heart duct. This didn't pose any problems during his first seven years, but due to the terrible accident the little one had and the resuscitation that the doctors had to perform, that duct started to fail to the point where the heart was damaged because it wasn't detected in time. Unfortunately, the little one's heart could no longer function and they had to connect Mario to a machine that would allow him to continue living for a limited time until they could find a donor. The mother went into shock and denial. Then the doctors had to sedate her to stop her from screaming because she couldn't accept that her little son had to go through all this because of her fault. Mario's father, facing the cruel reality of waiting for a heart donor, found himself plunged into an ocean of despair. 
Writing little Mario on a waiting list became an act of agony because the chances of finding a donor were slim with countless other children awaiting a miracle before him. Faced with this terrible powerlessness, the father, driven by an indomitable love and unwavering determination, made a decision that would echo as an act of heroism. Without hesitation, he decided to offer his own heart to save the life of his beloved son, because the mere idea of living in a world without him was an unbearable prospect. This drastic decision triggered a series of events, accelerating all necessary processes while Mario remained connected to machines. His body immersed in a deep sleep beside a mother whose heart beat in tune with fear and hope. Marcos, facing the vastness of his solitary choice, found no other way to express his love and farewell than through a touching video. He proclaimed his unconditional love for his family, revealing that every action was a pure expression of love without remorse, only the certainty that every sacrifice was worth it for them. And this is what he said, Hi son, I found a new heart for you. I just need to tell you a few things. I want you to always listen to your mother because she is your best friend. And family is very important. And about girls, you are too young for them now. But when the time comes, treat them like princesses. There are so many good things out there. I will always be here for you no matter what. Right here. See you later, son. I love you. Finally, Mario's fate found a ray of hope when his father became the donor of his own heart. The magnitude of this decision echoed the essence of a father's unconditional love willing to face the impossible to ensure the happiness and survival of his son, as exemplified by Marcos's unwavering courage on this extraordinary journey. Dear friends, reflect on this remarkable story. It reminds us of the indomitable strength of love and sacrifice, showing how an act of love can transcend the limits of human understanding. I thank each one of you for watching until here. Comment below if you've ever heard something similar, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share the video, friends. Stick with us because I'll tell you another story that I'm sure will move you. And in the end, tell us which one you liked the most. At the beginning, Ada was afraid of her husband since most villagers said he was arrogant, very serious, but she soon realized he wasn't like that. Nikolai treated her with affection and care. His attitude with Ada bore fruit, and soon she began to fall in love with him. They lived in perfect harmony. Ada took care of the house, and Nikolai dedicated himself to work responsibly. And so, three years passed. Everything seemed to be fine, but there was a big problem. They had no children. Nikolai didn't talk about it, but the woman knew he ardently desired them. One day, the mother said to her daughter, it would be better for you to give him children, even if it's just one. Otherwise, he will leave you. Who wants a wife who can't bear children? Ludmila helped more than one woman, but if you're not, it will be your fault. Ludmila was the witch who lived on the outskirts of the village. People avoided her, and the old woman liked that fear. She watched them with raised eyebrows and showed her toothless, cruel smile. Despite being feared, people believed she was their only hope to get what they desired. Ada refused to do what her mother wanted because she feared the old woman, but still couldn't conceive, and Nikolai started acting differently. Finally, Ada decided. She took advantage of her husband going to a meeting with his workers and went with Lundmala, taking some wine to the witch because she knew it was the only way to win her favor. With trembling steps, she headed towards the woman's hut, which lay lonely and somber in the middle of the forest. Upon arrival, she felt a shiver seeing her. Ada wanted to turn back and flee from that place, but it was too late. The witch had seen her from her window and called her with a hoarse, deep voice. What do you want from me? Asked Ludmila, fixing her gaze on Ada, who was speechless with terror. Why don't you speak? Did the rats eat your tongue? I don't have time to just see you. Tell me why you came or leave. Ada felt it was her last chance. If she turned her back, there would never be a turning back. Look, Granny, I brought this bag with money and came home, said Ada. Ludmila smiled and took what the young woman offered. Very well, this is better. Come into my house, and I'll tell you what you want to know, dear. The young woman entered and said, 
I've been married for over three years, but I can't have children. She sobbed. The witch set the bag aside and approached her. Ada felt a shiver run through her body when Ludmila asked her to lie down on a bed and placed her trembling hand on her belly. They stayed like that for a while, with Ludmila shaking her head and signaling negation. Then she abruptly removed her hand and went somewhere. Ada couldn't see where, as the golden light of the candle prevented her from seeing. After a while, Ludmila returned and handed her a cup with something. I want you to drink this, she said. What is it? Asked Ada, afraid to drink. Just drink it, said Ludmila, leading the young woman to observe the older woman. The candlelight illuminated her back, and only her shadow was visible, making her even darker. Ada closed her eyes and drank the contents. Tasted sour and very unpleasant. The healer looked at her belly without saying anything and then touched it with her hands. She started singing and applying slight pressure. Ada didn't understand what the woman was saying and didn't understand what was being done to her. This scared her. After a while, Ludmila removed her hand and exclaimed, As I thought, life will never form in your womb. It's empty, empty, empty. She repeated, Nothing will help you, even if you give me all your fortune. Ada heard the words of the old woman seemed like a nightmare. She ran away with an unknown destination. The words of the old woman echoed in her head. Empty, empty, empty. It's all over, said Ada, crying. And now what will I do? I have nothing inside. I wanted to have descendants, and I can't. And to her, God gave one, and she doesn't want it. Why is life so unfair? Ada suddenly had a crazy plan. Both women talked, and Lucia said, all right, I'll give you my son, but in return, I want a favor. If you ever need help, you'll help me no matter what, replied Ludmila, determined. Ada agreed. A few days later, Ada confessed to Nikolai, Love, I'm going to have a baby. The man filled with joy and even threw a party for the good news. Several months passed. Ada felt increasingly distressed wearing loose dresses and avoiding her husband's approach. Soon, she told her husband she would go to her mother's house. My mother will help me with childbirth. She's a midwife and knows everything about pregnancy. I want her to take care of me, Ada said. Ada thought Nikolai would resist, but to her surprise, he accepted without asking more questions. On the weekend, he left home. His mother knew her daughter's plans and agreed to help her. While Ada stayed with her, Nikolai visited her whenever he could, finding her almost always weak and lying in bed, worrying about her health. Months passed until the deadline was fulfilled, and a big, robust boy was born. But it wasn't Ada who gave birth, it was Lucia, who had lived in the same house as her. Lucia gave birth, received money, and left. No one asked where she went. They just prayed to stay away and never see her again. Soon, Ada returned home with her son. As soon as Nikolai saw the firstborn, he was filled with love for him, loving him with all his soul. As time passed, Vladimir, the name Nikolai gave to his son, grew strong and healthy. The boy was loved, and only sometimes did Ada observe him carefully, looking for characteristics of another and fearing her husband would notice. Fortunately for her, the boy had eyes and hair similar to his father's. Ada reassured herself and began to live without worrying. Vladimir was now three years old. One day, Ada was hanging clothes on the line and putting them in a bucket, but couldn't finish the task. The clothes slipped from her hands when she saw her son Vladimir at the door talking to a woman, Lucia. Panic filled Ada's heart as she approached the door. A thousand unanswered questions came to her mind, and suddenly, Lucia said, Hello, Ada. What are you doing here, Lucia? I came to see my son and something else, replied Lucia. What son are you talking about? Only my son is here, Ada said. You know very well where he comes from, but I didn't come for that. I have a proposal, said Lucia with an anguished expression. 
Covering her face with her hands and bursting into tears, Ada watched her and didn't know what to do but eventually decided. Wait for me here, she said. I'll be back with a glass of water. Ada didn't know how to comfort a woman who cried without stopping. Lucia looked at her son and at the teenager who lived with them. This girl was a distant relative of Nikolai's who had lost her parents. Nikolai had compassion for her and housed her. To Ada, she was a help because she assisted with household chores and took care of her son when she couldn't be with him. Now, Maria was with Vladimir in the yard while Ada talked to Lucia. She couldn't help but wonder why Lucia came to get the little boy and what proposal she had for her. She drank water and gradually calmed down. What are you doing here, Lucia? Nikolai could show up at any moment, and I don't want him to see you. Don't worry, I don't want to meet him. Is it true he's a grumpy guy? Not at all, he's a good man. Let me treat you well. Ada, I'll explain why I came. Lucia paused, searching for the words, and continued. I recently met a good man who asked me to marry him. Lucia fell silent again. And what's stopping you? If he's a good man, then marry him. I would, but it's not possible. But why isn't it possible? Asked Ada, confused. I'm pregnant, but it's from another man. If he finds out, he'll leave me and I wouldn't know what to do. Ada was stunned, unable to understand how she could be so irresponsible as to not consider the consequences. And what do you expect from me? What does that have to do with me? I'm nothing to you. Don't you remember when I gave you my son? You promised you would do me a favor, no matter what. Ada remembered and was horrified to realize that Lucia was asking, Do you want me to take care of your second child too and deceive my husband again? I'm sorry, but I can't. Besides, I did you the favor you wanted. You didn't want this baby, so it's better for you to leave and never come back here. I don't want to see you. Do you hear me? Go away. Lucia got up and looked at Ada again, but seeing her full of anger, she headed for the door. As soon as she left the courtyard, Ada ran and closed the door, not even paying attention to where Lucia was going. It didn't matter as long as she stayed away from them. When Nikolai returned home, Ada hadn't calmed down yet. Outwardly, she seemed fine, but inside she carried a heavy burden. Yes, Lucia gave birth, but Ada took care of the baby. She fed him, covered him, and bathed him. She was happy to be his mother. That day, while Vladimir fell asleep, she cried silently and couldn't sleep. When she went to have breakfast, she found Ada, as always, in the kitchen. But Ada's expression was different. She seemed pensive and sad. After breakfast, a man said goodbye and went to work without saying anything more. Ada wasn't herself all day, and when Nikolai returned in the afternoon, he found her sitting at the table, completely dejected. Dinner is ready, dear. I'm very tired and I want to eat and rest, Nikolai said. Nikolai, I need to talk to you. Please sit down, Ada said. The man looked at Ada in astonishment. What's so important that I need to know? I think I'm aware of everything that happens in my house. The man said with a smile. Ada lowered her head and said, Not everything. And so she began to tell him about the witch, about Lucia, and about Vladimir. Nikolai listened attentively. Ada didn't know what would happen next. Although she was prepared for anything, even to be thrown out of the house. Silence became eternal. Why are you so quiet, Nikolai? Say something. If it's my fault, I apologize for not saying it before. I love Vladimir as if he were mine, and if you want, I'll leave your life. Just say it. Nikolai stared at his wife and said, This child is ours, and I don't know what I would do without you both. As I said, I know everything that happens in my house. Together, we will find light and welcome it under our roof and take care of this baby. Only God knows what would have happened if it weren't like this, Nikolai said warmly. She had carried a heavy cross, thinking about her deceit, but it turned out that Nikolai knew everything from the beginning. Without a doubt, he had a kind and pure soul, the best man she could know. Two years had passed since then. Ada was at the door of her house, 
looking at her husband and her son. Nikolai was riding with Vladimir on the tractor, and the boy was happy. Suddenly, Ada heard little Nicoletta crying. She had woken up. She ran to her room to pick her up in her arms and began to hug her to make her sleep. After seeing that the girl was asleep, she looked at the cross and made the sign of the cross, thanking God for the family she had and also praying for Lucia's soul, who had given her the treasures of her life. Happiness reigned in her house. This video leaves us a great lesson, especially not to judge a person by appearances. Yes, everyone feared Nikolai. They considered him cold and grumpy, but he ended up having the noblest and purest soul. Besides, he forgave his wife, and together they formed a beautiful family. Ada deceived her husband, and that was wrong, but he forgave her because we all deserve a second chance when we are truly sorry, don't you think? After all, we all get a second chance every day. Each day is a gift, not a guaranteed right. Forgive and be forgiven just like Nikolai. Don't judge a book by its cover because we may be surprised by its content. Friends, have you ever been through something similar? Well, put your answer down here in the comments section. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, don't hesitate to leave a like and, above all, share it with your friends and family. Thank you very much for watching. By the way, I invite you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and activate the notification bell to receive our new videos. See you soon. A big hug and may God be with you.